Hi, in this video I will show how to make a DC DC boost converter which takes 5 volt as input and gives 12 volt output. And I will be making this boost converter with discrete components. Discrete components in the sense not using any integrated power management circuit. This is the first part of the two part video. In this part I will be discussing the basic calculations required for the part selection and I will simulate the circuit in LTSpice. In the next part, I will show the circuit after soldering the components in a perforated strip board. This is a basic circuit diagram of a DC-DC boost converter. We'll strain it with little more complexities as we'll go further, but this is a good starting point. Let me explain first in very simple words, how does a boost converter work? First, let's take the condition when the switch is off. As in DC, inductor acts like a short circuit, the input voltage is passed to the output. As the switch is turned on, the inductor starts charging. At this moment, the voltage at the node VSW is zero, so the diode is reverse biased. The output capacitor supplies its stored charge into the load. As the time goes on, the current through the inductor rises with a constant slope of V in by L. Now, as soon as the switch is turned off, the energy stored in the inductor tries to maintain the current constant flowing through it. So the inductor now becomes a source of energy. It generates a voltage across it and the polarity of the voltage becomes such that it can push the current in the same direction as it was flowing when the switch was on. Now the voltage at the VSW node is V in plus VL. So now the diode is forward biased and the output capacitor starts charging. The voltage developed across the inductor VL depends on how much energy it stored during charging. As the on time of the switch gets longer, the energy stored in the inductor becomes larger. And as the stored energy becomes higher, the VL or the voltage developed across the inductor during discharging that becomes larger. And as long as the switch remains off, the inductor gets discharged, causing VL to be reduced. Eventually, the inductor will, will be fully discharged. So, by controlling the on time and off time of the switch, we can control the output voltage. To do that, we generate a PWM signal and control its duty cycle by an error amplifier. Now, we'll move towards the actual circuit implementation. For this project, I have selected the fixed frequency peak current mode control. I know these words might sound like alien words to them who barely have any idea about DC-DC converter and its different control techniques. But for them, I would suggest just to bear with me and you will get an idea at least just enough to design your first boost converter. Our boost converter will take 5 volt input and give 12 volt output. Maximum load current is 2 ampere, maximum ripple voltage is 120 millivolt, power efficiency we are targeting 80% and switching frequency would be 120 kilohertz. Now let's start doing the math for the power stage of the converter. The power stage of a DC DC converter generally consists of an inductor, output capacitor, switch, a diode and the PWM generator. At first, we'll calculate the switching current for the given input-output voltages. The duty cycle is calculated using the equation based on the input-output voltages and the estimated efficiency. And it comes out to be around 0.67 or 67%. Now, based on that duty cycle, the inductor ripple current, delta IL, is found out to be approximately 5 ampere. Here, we designer takes either of two approaches. First, we have already selected the inductor value as in this case. Then we calculate the ripple current using equation number two. In the second approach, we take the ripple current in the range of 20 to 40% of the maximum load current and calculate the inductance using equation number three. In my case, I didn't have power inductors of multiple values. So I had to take 5.6 micro Henry, whatever I was having in myself. The maximum switching current is estimated as 8.5 ampere. 
this is a fairly large number and of course not according to the recommended design thumb rule. I should have used a larger inductor to reduce the inductor ripple current because the switching frequency is already high enough. But here my goal is to show you the procedure, not the result. So if you understand the method, then you can easily recalculate by yourself and change the components with proper values. The diode also should be able to handle this same amount of current as we have calculated for the switching current, ISW. The output capacitor is selected based on the desired maximum ripple voltage at the output. The calculated capacitor is 93 microfarad, but I am taking 470 microfarad because uh, my ripple current is too high. So the ripple voltage due to the ESR of the capacitor will be much larger in my case. To compensate that, I had to take larger value of the output capacitor. But that comes at a price of slower loop response of the system. Now we will design the error amplifier part. The error amplifier basically tells the controller how much difference is there between the reference voltage and the output feedback voltage. To design the compensator network, we must find out first the poles and zeros of the system itself. The output capacitor pole rises at 113 Hz and it comes closer to the origin as the output current is reduced. The right up plane zero appears at 29.6 kHz. The thumb rule is that the crossover frequency should be at around one fifth of the right up plane zero. So the crossover frequency should be at around 6 kHz. Since the system has one pole at low frequency region, we need a type 2 compensator. The compensator has a pole very close to the origin then a zero at around 482 Hz that is near the power stage pole. The compensator has a second pole at 48 kHz which helps to suppress the high frequency switching noise. Now as the duty cycle goes beyond 50% so the subharmonic oscillation may arise and to suppress it we need to add a compensating ramp with the current sense amplifier output. The reason we call it as peak current mode control, we not only take the voltage feedback but we also monitor the inductor current during the on time phase of the switch on every switching cycle. To sense the inductor current, I am using a 10 milliohm sense register and amplify the voltage across it with an op amp adder circuit. The second input of the adder takes the compensating ramp. The compensation ramp is generated from the same ramp signal which generates the PWM clock. Now the calculation part is over and I have fired up the LT spice. This is the power stage. Here is the 5.6 micro Henry inductor. R2 is the sense register. This is uh, the current sense amplifier. Here is the type 2 compensator. This 555 timer I see in a stable multivibrator mode generates the clock pulses. This 555 I see I have used as flip flop and comparator that compares the control voltage and the current sense voltage. As the current sense voltage crosses the control voltage, the output goes low. I have used a charge pump to generate a negative 5 volt supply for the op amp so that it can amplify the voltage across the sense register which is very near to the ground voltage or 0 volt. I have also added a reset signal generator which hard resets the PWM to limit the duty cycle at 80%. This is a safety feature. The same reset signal generator also adds the soft start feature. It limits the duty cycle at near zero when the circuit is starting and gradually increases it to 80%. Now I'm running the simulation. 
So the output voltage is constant at 12 volt. I have suddenly changed the load current from 50 milliampere to 2 ampere, but the output is pretty much stable. This is the output ripple voltage. So everything is working as expected in the simulator. In the next part, I will solder these components in a prep board and I will show the real hardware. So that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like and share this video and please consider subscribing this channel. I'll be meeting in the next video. Bye.